has been the darling of television viewers for many years, appearing on TV soapies such as Mubango, Generations, Seven the Land, Soul City, etc., etc., etc. And she's also appeared on children's shows as well as on stage. The multi award winning actress is also a multilinguist and activist for artists' rights. Florence Masebe has gone through the highs and lows of celebrity life and joins us to talk about her career and lessons learned over the past 20 years or more and Florence is here with us well I just said 20 you know to be on the right side of things I nearly said 35 40 years <laughs> but yes, I it, it you could go been. a little further yes 25 yeah. plus yeah 25 plus but yeah. it's uh, been good innings so far right uh, career-wise look at the titles of the soapies that I've mentioned absolutely so you've been very much part of the lives of many people who look forward to their favorite entertainment on TV but what was the best of the of the soapies for you? Who I can't say I remember the best. The best of the soapies, actually, I think you didn't mention it was Scandal. Scandal, yes, which continues to be a very popular. I had one. a lot of fun at Scandal. Yeah. I think the character um, I was given at Scandal was the first time after being sweet and nice in certain places. Scandal gave me my first taste of just being rough and evil. Yes. And it, well. it was fun. It's always fun playing a really scary person. But, but you know, uh, you, before we started the interview, you were telling me you even forgot how one of your earlier scenes on television, right? But how could that be? Because people always remember the first time something of significance happened like in their life. Age and is uh, catching up. It's age now? Age is catching up. No. <laughs> Look, it was a long time ago. It yes, took, I can't yes. forget ever doing that. I remember how my brother Tabo used to drive me all the way from the East Rand at the yeah, time. Yeah. We were not Ekuruleni yet. Yeah. And drive me to uh, Philo Peters' studios in Midrand. Uh -huh. And I would go there to shoot this children's program called Look and Say, where we were doing the alphabet in English and Sesotho. And which... Then means you started early in this television thing, right? I started very early in this and television. What was the turning point? I mean, what happened that got you involved in, in television? It's a crazy thing. I never wanted to be involved in television. I was so snooty, I thought television was below me. I mm. wanted to be a serious stage actress. Mm. And, you know, when I left drama school, television knocked before stage and I mm. stayed on television. Yeah, and so theater is still waiting to say, but Florence, when are you coming to dominate? I need... We, we, we gave you the opening. I promised Dr. John Kani that one day I'm going to do this. Yes, because, yeah. you know, many people would have thought that you come from theater anyway. I do. I mean, the way you just did this television thing with aplomb and uh, took so easily to it. I, 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 look, television was a good friend. Uh, television has fed my children and kept me clothed for many years. But my first love is the stage, and I'd love to find myself there one day. But let's talk about uh, the particular turning point that I referred to. I mean, what, what is it, irrespective of how, what your plans were, but the thing that turned it around for you, that made you finally become this household name thanks to TV? I would think <coughs> um, Electric Workshop. Electric Workshop happened for me at the time when the SABC was relaunching and coming up. We went from those days of, SA, uh, what was it, TV1, TV2, yeah. and then it was CCV TV. When I started, it was C CCV TV. Mm. And then they relaunched and they were having um, these new, vibey, funky things. And there was this crazy youth program called Electric Workshop. And I was one of the young people that got selected to do it, and it got me to travel the world and interview the most amazing people. I, I lived a crazy life. I remember I would literally pinch myself as I come back on the plane, thinking, oh, I just went to the Fashion Cafe Lounge. Mm. I was with Naomi Campbell and mm. Cindy Crawford. Mm. I, I, I was with Sylvester Stallone. So all of those things, and I was quite young at the time, put me at a place I did not think I was going to, and it didn't stop from there. So when you reflect, it's, this is not the end of your career, by the way, so I must be careful how I ask the <laughs> question, because it sounds like somebody is retired or has just reached the end of the road. But over time, now far. and again, you've got to remind <laughs> yourself that you've had great innings, you've had fun. Now, what gave you the greatest satisfaction over, over the years? Was it meeting the stars or, you know, of, this, of, this, of any part of television? You know, the craziest thing with me, <clears throat> is the director walking up to me after any scene and say thank you that mm. was beautiful 
So it doesn't matter what it is I'm doing. If I know I help the director get their vision right, I'm happy. But people who watch television, entertainment specifically, think that it's easy to walk in the park. Yeah. And in time, they also develop a personal relationship with the characters on television. And then uh, regard you, the actor, as the character on TV. I'm sure you've had your fair share of that, right? But it's not easy. Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you know, you've got to smile through it. It gets really, really irritating when even people that know you yes. ever since you were a child suddenly refer to you by character name. Yes. You know, um, it, it gets very uncomfortable when people will walk up to you at the graveyard when you're at a funeral and they want to entertain talks of whatever character you are on television and not even respecting the moment of grief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It happens. You learn to just live with it. You learn to, to smile and, and find kind ways of calling it out. But it's also, the work has got its own downsides, isn't it? I mean, notwithstanding the fact that you have met uh, all the interesting people, you've worked with fantastic people, the directors have said thank you to you and the public have also given you encouragement. There have been moments when it, it feels like it's not worth it. Oh, there are many, many moments when it feels like it's not worth it. And, and look, I'm going to be honest. When you have worked to where I am, you're a little bit cushioned personally mm. from it. But you would have to be very stupid and unfeeling to not see the unfairness all around you with fellow actors or crew or just generally uh, it's a downward slide. It's, it's very depressing. There are times when we ask, why are we here? We are mad. That's why we do what we do. But, but, but what, what is it really that makes you feel despondent, disappointed, and discouraged when you look around you and you are on set or doing whatever that you need to do uh, for a television production? Tim, there was television 20 years ago. There was television... 15 years ago, television 10 years ago, the older years were much better. The standards were much better. Now, everything seems to just be going down. You're lucky really? if we give you a cup of coffee. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. Because Look I would have thought... This is comfortable. Yeah. Actors don't know these things. We, we stand around and try to figure out where do I go and stand before they call me for the Honestly, next scene. I thought with the passage of time that Actors were now the superstars. No, actually. Right? The celebrities who could match celebrities anywhere in the world. Actors are earning less. This is a fact people don't want to talk about. Yeah. Actors are earning less because the minute somebody calls up Florence and say, we would like you to be part of this, the first thing they say, we don't have a budget to tell her not to outprice herself from this job. Yeah. So we don't call our own price. Our prices are being determined by people sitting in offices I don't know where. Yes. Because they've figured out how they're going to keep the bulk of what they claim they're paying me for their own benefit. Actors are earning less and less. If I'm earning less and less, I don't want to know what the entry-level actor today is being paid. I just want to go back to the point you made earlier. Uh, I mean, just a short moment ago. that You say 20 years ago, 15 years ago, things were somewhat better than now. I'm, I'm still trying to figure that one out in my mind that... How so? What is it that you've seen as a decline in, in terms of terms the conditions? In terms of standards, in terms of professionalism, the crews and the, and the, and the, and the cast get better every day. Mm. But the environment in which they are made to work gets worse every day. So um, every time there's been a financial crisis, for instance, at the public broadcaster, people would say, there aren't any budgets, you know things are tough. So budgets have been slashed. So when they slash budgets, where's the first place they slash? They cut your rates. They slash budgets one more time. They slash all the other things that you need. Listen, actors translate their own scripts. You don't even have translators anymore. And even after translating it, they won't type it in and print it out for you. You must just work with whatever you wrote in pencil or pen. Well. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted, I wanted to go somewhere with this, with this discussion. But uh, that is something of concern because we thought, uh, that, you know, we've got basic conditions of employment for workers everywhere in our nation and uh, people 
who know, who are unionized, will use at least the laws of the country when it comes to that? Well, let's start there. We are not unionized, and that is our biggest, biggest downfall as an industry. We are not unionized. Uh, we had power back in the days. Maybe that's why I'm saying things were better, because power tried to fight. But remember, things were better in those days because we also only had one broadcaster. Mm. Mm. And then um, another broadcaster joined in. And then ETV also came in. And then now you've got multiple platforms on DSTV. Well, 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 one would have thought precisely because of the competitive environment, conditions and opportunities have improved for artists no. anyway just to make sure <laughs> that we sort out some of these things i'm aware that you in your own right you have uh, become an activist low key or high profile i'm not sure but <laughs> that you have raised these things in your in your own uh, independent and personal right so i took the liberty to invite arts and culture to this conversation so that we try and put it on the agenda and see what can be done to improve the working conditions of artists. And we'll do that in a moment. Asanda Magaka of Arts and Culture is going to join my conversation with Florence Masebe as we talk about the conditions, working conditions of artists, especially TV actors who we all love as our favorite celebrities. We'll continue the conversation. <laughs>